At eight o'clock in the morning, the signal being made to move forward by beating of drums, the whole rode off, extending their front from one side of the lake to the other, doubling their fronts as the lake drew nearer. Captain Hugh Arnott, 80th Regiment of Foot. Lord Howe immediately rode off from the body of the army and put himself at their head and gave the signal for landing. In a moment, he, the Grenadiers, and Light Infantry landed. Captain Hugh Arnott, 80th Regiment of Foot. Lord Howe and his party had proceeded but a short distance into the woods before we were met by the enemy, and a brisk fire ensued. It was the first engagement I had ever seen, and the whistling of balls and roar of musketry terrified me not a little. The length of our regiment formed among the trees, behind which the men kept stepping from their ranks for shelter. Colonel Preble, who I well remember was a harsh man, swore he would knock the first man down who should step out of his ranks, which greatly surprised me to think that I must stand still to be shot at. Pretty soon, however, they brought along some wounded Frenchmen, and when I came to see the blood run so freely and put new life into me, David Perry, Colonel Preble's regiment. My lord Howe was killed. He was Brigadier General and showed the greatest talents, although still in his youth. He had, above all, in the greatest degree, those two qualities of heroes, activity and audacity. He it was who had projected the enterprise against Canada, and he alone was capable of executing it. He was marching towards us when Sir de Trepezac's detachment ran blindly into his column. At first, the shots he ran up and was killed dead. His death stopped the advance. This disheartened English gave us 24 hours delay and this precious time was the saving of us and the colony. Lui entend de Bougainville. The death of Lord Howe, on whom the army had great dependence from his sanguine, alert, and cautious disposition, cautious of everyone's welfare but his own, his death, my lord, seemed to presage the future. Captain Hugh Arnott, 80th Regiment of Foot, to Lord Loudon. They had cut trees laid one above another, a man's height, and in the outside there was brush and logs for about 45 paces from it, which made it impossible to force their breastworks without cannon. Captain James Murray, 42nd Regiment of Foot. Between one and two we marched up and attacked their trenches and got within twenty paces of them and had as hot a fire for about three hours as possible could be, we all the time seeing but their hats and the end of their muskets. Captain James Murray, 42nd Regiment, to his brother John Murray. The guns did roar like thunder, and from about noon till about sunset there was a steady fire, and the groans of wounded men were continually sounding in our ears. In short, the doctors had more than they could do, and many a poor soldier came in with his farewell shot. Samuel Fisher, Colonel Timothy Ruggles Regiment. Join us July 18th and 19th, 2015 to follow the footsteps of these brave soldiers and to relive the epic 1758 battle here at Fort Carrion. Help give these soldiers the proper remembrance and honor they deserve for the great sacrifices they made at our reenactment, Montcalm's Cross. Learn more at www.forttaikonderoga.org.